Welcome to the Happier and Healthier Podcast. I'm your host, Maria Marlowe, and this is a place where we don't rely on good luck or good genes for our health and happiness, but rather we create it with our thoughts and our actions each and every single day. Each week, I'll bring you a thought or a guest that will help you live your happiest and healthiest life. Are you ready? Welcome back to the Happier and Healthier Podcast. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Alawanjo Chala, the founder and CEO of Alafia. Alafia is a natural body care company that is sustainable, fair trade, and completely socially responsible. If you've ever browsed the body care section at Whole Foods, you have undoubtedly seen their products. I know I personally discovered them when I was back in college, which is over 10 years ago, which is kind of crazy, and have been using them ever since. The primary ingredient in many of these products is shea butter, which Alafia sources from Alawanjo's native Togo in West Africa. Here, he has set up various co-ops, which now employ or contract over 14,000 people, primarily women. Not only does he pay his employees and workers a fair salary, he also goes back and supports these community in so many different ways, from building schools to donating bicycles to helping with maternal care, and even they've planted over 80,000 fruit trees to help make these communities or give these communities a sustainable source of food. This company is an incredible example of how you can be profitable while also being incredibly socially responsible. I think you'll find Alawanjo's story incredibly inspiring. I know I did, and I think you'll really enjoy this interview. This podcast is brought to you by my Healthy by Marlo nutrition course, the eight-week online science-backed doctor-approved course to help you slim down, improve your health, and most importantly, better understand and love your body. You'll learn how to tailor your diet to your unique needs so that you can banish bloating, improve your mood and energy, and slim down, all the while eating hearty, healthy meals that will keep you feeling energized and satisfied. Head to mariamarlo.com forward slash nutrition dash course to start today. Alawanja, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So first off, I just want to say thank you for creating such an incredible product. I've been using it since college, which is 10 years by now, which is kind of crazy. And it wasn't just the quality of the product because I'm very into reading ingredient labels and I always make sure I'm, I have a natural products. So it wasn't just that. It was also that what your company stands for and you're a fair trade company and social enterprise. So take us back to the beginning. You grew up in Togo, West Africa. Can you share a little bit about your childhood and then what inspired you to create Alafia. Thank you. I just wanted to say quickly that I cannot take me alone the credit uh, for where Alafia is today. It is an effort of many people around the world and our team. And uh, so the, the, I think what I'm trying to say is that this effort is only going to be achieved by people's support. As you mentioned, Togo, for those of you that don't know, is a very small country in the West part of Africa, right between Benin and Ghana. And I grew up in northern part of Togo, uh, near the Savannah. And the, in, in, in the shea trees, as we can talk about later, shea trees grow throughout the whole Savannah of West Africa, Blue Mortania, all the way through Cameroon. And it happened that my village of Kabole was right on, uh, on the belt of the, of the shea trees. So I grew up uh, collecting shea nuts and we're farmers. My father has 42 children. My mother has eight children. And when I try to really articulate what are the inspirations for the start of Alaf, yeah, I think it's a, one of those things that you cannot put in one word. All I, I, to me, deep inside me, I have felt the duty and the moral responsibility to somehow participate in my communities. That's even before I came to the U.S. So I dropped out of school and helped my mother. And my mother was uh, an indentured servant to the neighboring country of Benin. And she wanted to make sure that we know what it means to have a community. We know what it means 
to serve others. So she always put others before us. And I remember a particular incident where we have, because Kaboli, my village, is a border town, right to Benin. So young people, mostly young ladies, will cross from Kaboli, heading to Nigeria to go look for work. And often, my mother will share our food. And if you, if you can imagine eight children and taking their food and to share with the strangers, uh, it, it's, a, it's really going beyond your own immediate. And I think that really has stuck with me. And additionally, my mother was really into our culture, the value of our own culture, uh, making sure that we, we wear our colors and we're to be proud of, of our colors and use the traditional herbs. And fast forward, as I become a young, young adult, end up in the States, that's really when I begin to see the whole world. And I begin to understand the pain that we went through, collecting the share nuts, selling the share nuts for pennies, and still having to drop out of school, despite the resources that we have. And I think I also was able to understand the civil rights movements in, in America and, and just the right of the people overall and to really also understand the colonization that happened throughout West Africa. So the gist of it is that I felt that there's a need to use economics to achieve equality, and particularly to achieve gender equalities. Because again, for me, it's how do I serve my mother and the many women that are like her throughout West Africa. And that economics uh, means that uh, providing jobs, because I, I believe having a stable income for members of our communities can help us uh, to have equal uh, or equitable societies. And that's really what led to the formations of the Alafia Coa back in 2003. And the idea was pretty simple. How do we use our traditional methods to make something that women like my mother know how to do if I happen to go to school and so on and so forth? And how do we do that to ensure that the environment is taken into consideration. And so, and she had nuts uh, wild, so it made sense to the fact that we have traditional knowledge already on how to make uh, the shea butter. So we, we make shea butter and we realize that here in America, people also need healthy product. So to me, is how do you, is doing something that benefit both societies? But the end goal, really, the end goal for Lafia is that how do we uplift and strengthen our communities? And the, the way we can do that is investing in, in the future societies. So selling products so that we can invest in what I call the driver of the society. And we can talk about that a little bit later. That, that's a long, 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 <laughs> long, long answer. But the just of it is that I, I really just felt the need uh, to serve our communities, our collective communities. And uh, I feel that is the just thing to do. Yeah, and it's incredible what you've done. I definitely want to talk about some of the social initiatives and incredible things that you've done. But first, let's just talk about fair trade. I think most people know what it is, but can you just share a little bit about what fair trade is and why it was so important for you to set up these fair trade co-ops? Thank you. So I wanted to say that fair trade is not free trade. So free trade is a government to government treaties essentially on uh, how to either have, uh, how to exchange good between countries with or without duties to, to enter the country. Fair trade on our hand is uh, organization to organization. Is a, fair trade is understanding that if you pay a fair price for the labor uh, and particular resources of various communities and they'll be able to sustain themselves. And a fair price is really a living wage and a living market price. And, you know, often when we talk about fair trade, we talk about coffee, but fair trade should uh, imply to all good that are exchanged. So, it, they, they, and it works in different commodities. And another thing that is really important when we talk about fair trade is that if you are certified fair trade like Alafia is, it, this is taken into the, condition, into the consideration of the working condition. And this is really important. I mean, in today's world, around the world, we, we have most of the goods are made are not made in a safe condition for the people. And so the, the fair trade not only ensures the market price for the particular resource, the commodity that is being traded, 
but the working condition of the people who are producing those particular product. So how does it work? Depending on the commodity, you have, if you're certified fair trade, you have an independent agency. And the agency come just like an audit, will come and audit and look the, uh, the, the salary variance within the organizations that, and then look into, are the people working within the organization are being compensated enough so that they can have uh, living wages. That's one of the steps. And then also they will look into the working condition or those safe working conditions. And then we, you have to look into the price of the item that has been, is being traded. They, so they will look at the market price and look at the price on the record of uh, how, uh, in this case, uh, Salafia is engaged in buying share nuts and ensure that those are, those are fair conversation. But for me, uh, I think fair trade is just one step when we engage with communities uh, that are not in equal footing, if I may say, right? Because when you're poor, you tend to take what's given to you. The fair trade helps to ensure that there's some form of uh, fairness essentially in trading. But I think we feel that we need to go beyond than just paying fair wages or fair prices for the particular resource that is being traded. We have to look how is it that the, that particular product is uh, it produces uh, a return as we invest it back into community that have nothing to do with those who actually are creating that particular product. Yeah, one thing I had looked on your website and saw some of your interviews and what stood out to me, I, I remember you saying something along the lines of you looked around and you saw that these big multinational companies were coming to Togo and, and buying the, the shea nuts for peanuts for like nothing and not paying the fair prices. And you said, no, this is not right. We have this resource. Let's make sure the people are paid adequately and fairly. And the story is from some of your employees. And now you employ over 14,000 people. Is that right? Well, exactly. We work with over 14,000 independent individuals within the uh, Togo and Ghana. And, and I think... Uh, Perhaps I can share with you a little bit because seeing what is around you and determining that a fair price needs to be employed, you need to organize the people. Just, just the will of one to pay a fair price is, is not going to work. So what we have done is essentially create a model where we form those various unions, I call them. So we'll, we'll organize different communities into uh, small unions and then they, and we'll, or you can call them collectives. They, so the collective will have their president, their vice president, their treasury, uh, just like any institution. So Alafia is, we, Alafia is a field officers. And then they will be trained also on environment. And what is the key here is that we'll, they'll be trained on their rights. Uh, they'll be trained on how to demand a fair price because uh, just demanding a fair price on how uh, those cooperative work with Alafia is not enough. I want them, and they must demand a fair price for all people that they sell the share now to or any other commodity, because that's really how we can it, uh, bring the community up. Uh, so that's really, that has, I think, is one of the biggest uh, uh, things I think Alafia has been able to do in the community. And all these, so these 14,000 then, you can imagine as together if they're able to sell product to Alafia under the fair trade and do the same around around them in the community really just brings the income up. Yeah, that's amazing. And can you talk a little bit about some of the social efforts and initiatives that you've been able to put in place with, I know you do something with bicycles and schools and uh, maternal care. So can you share some of those initiatives? Thank you. Yes. Um, and I think, like I mentioned earlier, the, that, that is the goal, is to mobilize, create these, uh, what I call alternative uh, product that Lafia has. And the money needs to go into the drivers of society. Uh, I really believe that one of the reasons that we have uh, extreme poverty throughout West Africa uh, is the lack of the reinvestment on the returns of the uh, resources that come from the area. 
Uh, and when I, what I mean by that is that I think that if we put more of the return back into the community, uh, that that can really help us reduce the gender inequalities or poverty issues. And I think, that again, I reflect on my own childhood. What, what are the things in the society that if those were in place, our life could have been a little bit different? And I call those the drivers of society, which are health, educations and environment. It's very straightforward. And all of those drivers I should be invested at the same time continuously. And I'll talk about each of them a little bit, but I do think it is important when you're investing in those drivers of a society that is they are continuous. Say so it does it, what I'm trying to say is that we cannot say, oh, we build a school today and then we wait another five years to say we're going to build another one. Those, from the day that Alafia was founded to the present, every year we maintain and continue those various community projects. And I think that's really critical because then you're able to monitor and measure the impact that that's really creating in the community. So the, those community projects, we can, we can start with uh, education. And so what we have done is every step that we take on those drivers, they need to be achievable and reasonable. So within the education, we thought that there are, in Togo, kindergartens are absolutely lacking. It's rare that you find a kindergarten in, in the village or even in the city, in the bigger cities maybe. And so we feel that fundamentally kindergartens are necessary. So we built kindergartens. So I feel we'll go into the community, uh, we'll do the, the research and collect information and, uh, and look those communities that are most in need. So up, up to now we have about 15 uh, schools that, that we have built and mostly kindergarten. And when we build those, we also provide what we call benches. Uh, I remember, going to school in Togo, you sit on those benches and there's six children or eight children. And it's really difficult when you're just trying to get, you know, be able to sit. And, uh, and that was not a best way of learning environment. So we'll provide the benches as well. And in addition to the education part, I would say that our bicycle program is one of the biggest programs that we think it really makes a big difference in the community. So what is it? We collect bicycles in the U.S., uh, primarily in the state of Oregon, uh, Washington State, and California. And Alafia will ship those bicycles to, to Togo. And those are used bicycles, which is also a good thing to um, prevent them from going to landfills in America. And those bicycles are intended for mostly young girls. And the reason why young girls are in Togo over 40% uh, of the young girls will drop out by the time they reach a secondary school. And what we realized, and from my own life growing up in Togo, is a distance to school, where you have to walk to school five miles or 10 miles. And if you're a young girl in Togo, culturally, you are helping doing dishes, you're helping washing, doing so many things at home. And it's very difficult to do all of that that's required of a young lady, be able to get time to study and walk just a long distance in the hot sun. So we thought we cannot change how everything is, how things are required for a young lady in Togo. But what we can change is make it possible to reduce the amount of time that a young lady in Togo is walking to school. And that is by providing a bicycle. And what we have realized that instead of a 40% dropout rate, just by simply providing a bicycle, we have over 90% retention in school. And again, we feel that that's another step towards this gender equality is by allowing our young girls to be able to have education so that they can have jobs one day. That's uh, incredible. Thank you. And so today we have over 10,000 bicycles in circulation in Togo. And if you think about 10,000, it's more than 10,000 in the sense that those are multipliers, right? Those bicycles, the family use it for other things, they use it for emergencies. So it's really providing, a, it helps a family also function. You know, a bicycle may seem like a, a small thing in America, but 
grew up in Togo, I I never dream of having a car. You know, I, the biggest thing I dream of is if I can have a bicycle, I'll be the king of the world. So the bicycle is a big deal, as you can imagine. Uh, yeah. In these areas, and so that's uh, on our education, and and then we intend to continue. And when it comes to the environment, uh, it's similar. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We have a, uh, three different nurseries that we do. We, we plan to get our own baby trees, I call it, get them ready, and then distribute it you know, within the community. And we do that in two parts. Some of the trees are distributed in school. Uh, they would, those would be like fruit trees so that when during the, there's a time in Togo, what we call the hunger season, right, between the seasons. And it's very difficult for students to have enough food. So by having fruit trees and they're able to get some of that, that as food, mango and so on. And then we do the different trees that are soil fixing to help uh, so they prevent erosion. So, but the key really behind the environmental tree planting is really to get the community to understand that deforestation is not going to serve us. Uh, that deforestation leads to farming. That is that uh, when we cut most of our trees down, what will happen then we have erosion during the rainy season. And on and on, and very soon we don't have a, a soil that is fer- that's further enough uh, to farm. And if you're poor, it's quite difficult to buy fertilizer. And I'm not suggesting that fertilizer is a good thing to use at all. Um, so to prevent farming, uh, we need to make sure that we have our trees to keep the topsoil so that we can farm. And I think, the, it, you know, we all know any form of farming or hunger makes the society difficult to move forward and rise out of poverty. And, and when it comes to our health, within the health, we focus mostly on women's health. And within the women's health, we have two things that we do. One is the prevention of uh, FGM uh, that is happening still in Togo and various parts of uh, northern Ghana. But the other part of it is simply providing maternal support for those women that likely that they will lose their life trying to give birth. Uh, even today, one in 16 women in Togo have a chance of dying simply by trying to bring life. Uh, and those numbers are similar to the to the death rate for women in the U.S. back in 1700, and we're not 1700 anymore. And I think, again, what is the goal of Alafia? The goal of Alafia, not only to achieve gender qualities in our societies, is to have thriving societies, is to have sustainable societies, is to have societies that can take care of themselves. And we cannot uh, reduce poverty when we're losing our mothers trying to give trying to give life and what typically happened is that when a mother died trying to give birth there are siblings that they may they, they can drop out of school uh, in togo a mother really is the holder is is anchor of the family and when you don't have a mother it's very likely that the other children will drop out and you can imagine again when we have that drop out and then the cycle of poverty kind of carries on. So we feel that, to, again, one step to try to break the cycle of poverty is to ensure that our mothers are alive. Um, and also it's just the right thing to do. I think it, it's, it's a moral thing to do. No person should have to die simply by trying to give birth. Yeah, that's incredible. I feel like your company is the gold standard for socially responsible businesses because you're thinking about the community, you're thinking about the workers, about the environment, uh, and even the product is is a good for you product, right, for the end consumer. So, yeah, it's just amazing that you've been so thoughtful in creating your brand and all of the initiatives that you do to be able to really positively impact the planet on so many different fronts. Thank you. It's an, it's a, it's a, it has to where it should be. I don't, you know, I, I don't, uh, organizations uh, for profit should not have to take away from a society, you know. I think we need to approach it even for profit organization as a serving a community, uh, providing a service to a community. And, and when you provide a, a service to a community, you don't want to take uh, everything else from the community. 
Yeah. So and right. that's how I see Alafia is serving the community. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Shea itself and even the black soap. Can you just tell us a little bit about the benefits of these products? <laughs> well, I think the way to realize the benefit of a product is really understanding how those products are made, right? And, you know, you could have a product that is, it may be, so what is healthy for you? Okay. But how is it healthy if we cannot understand how the nutrients are maintained when it's been made? And so what I'm trying to say is that uh, that comes healthy of a product or the benefit of a product needs, needs to start first by ensuring that those products have no contamination with the key ingredients that go into the particular product. Uh, with Alavia, uh, the fact that we traditionally handcrafted uh, our own product and the process of uh, making shea butter out of the shea nut is, uh, is ensure that no chemical is used. And uh, you may have seen various pictures on our website how that's, how that's done. So those bases are very important. But when it comes to the, you know, the, the, the benefit of the product themselves, it's also ensure that they, they have efficacy. And you will see that we, we do various combinations. Shea butters are one of the best moisturizers in the world. And you can imagine uh, this is something that uh, evolved out of the savannah of West Africa where the environment can be quite harsh, where the sun can be quite harsh. So a shea butter help protect against the UVs and sun damage. And then it also is something that, when, especially in the winter, the, that it helps to not get too much of a crack of the hills and, and so on and so forth. But what we do is combine them. So we'll take a shea butter, the best moisturizer in the world, and combine it, for instance, with neem. And neem is antifungal, antibacterial. So you now you it depend on the product. You at any given time you get the moisturizing properties of the shea butter, and then combine with another ingredient that have some type of a active uh, impact that can help the skin wear. And so we you know we talk about shea butter a lot, but within the alafia ingredient you see coconut oil, a very hydrating uh, oil, and we call it virgin coconut oil. I mean it's not processed. We use moringa as well, that we have uh, farms in Togo where our moringas come from. And then the, we try to, when it comes to essential oils, uh, we're using the purest essential oils and I use synthetic scents because that's really important too. You know, you could have a product like shea butter or moringa or neem oil, but if you end up putting a synthetic scent, then that's not, that's not going to help. So when it comes to our formulation, really is first and foremost ensuring that we're using unrefined ingredients. And then when they're combined, ensure that they have a specific uh, uh, result that they, when they intended to solve. And so I wanted to tell you quickly, you mentioned black soap. So black soap, you may wonder where's the name come from? So in Yoruba language, uh, out of Nigeria, you said dudu ose or ose dudu, it means black soap. And these are, the, I would say, the most ancient soap in, in West Africa. How is it different than the typical soaps? The traditional way, if the black soap is made in a traditional manner, essentially you're cooking the oils and adding potash. You use ash uh, in, instead of sodium hydroxide, you use uh, potassium hydroxide, which is the ash. And those are 100% vegetable reactors that you're putting in oils. And most soap making, you're reacting them with uh, sodium hydroxide. And that is quite different. Whereas the black soap, when you're using the ashes and cooking it, what you're trying to do is to turn those oils into charcoal-like. So in West Africa, we believe that charcoal is detoxifying, purifying culturally. So and, and as it turns into charcoal, that's really where that so-called black comes into. Uh, and what we do too is en ensure that we cure these in, in the sun for about three weeks. So it, the black soap then is uh, um, the point is a quite gentle, very gentle soap. And with the charcoal aspect of it, uh, is is good for detoxifying the skin and very gentle on the babies as well. We, in Togo, that's one of the things that's used quite a bit on the newborn. 
or people with sensitive skin. Yeah. And so I know I typically buy my Alafia products at Whole Foods, but where else can people find them? Thank you. Um, you, we, on our website, alafia.com, we have a product in Target and Walmart as well and Amazon. So I understand Alafia is also going through a rebirth right now. So can you share a little bit about that? Yes. So we, we as an organization, and Alafia is, a, it wasn't that when we started Alafia, we said, okay, these are, campaign, these are strategy, is really very grassroots from one person to the next, from one store to the next. And after all those years, and th that was very important because what that means is that you can have an organization that really live up to what is intended to do. And you're not putting your energy on just so-called marketing. But we have come to realize that there's a need to really explain Alafia to the world. And we talk about cultures a lot, how important our culture is, how important uh, culture is impact on uh, how we formulate and what we do and how we share with the world and how we service the world. So with that, uh, last year, we spent a lot of time ensuring that our colors uh, that we so uh, admire so much uh, will come through our packaging. But most importantly, we felt that it is important what Lafayette is doing in the community as serving the community. But what is also important is that those who are supporting us need to understand where the money is going. And we want to publish on our bottles exactly where the money is going, how it's funding different community projects. So the rebirth really is one to ensure that our colors and everything that we're quite proud of that has to do with our culture is reflected in addition to publicly uh, uh, set out to share with our customers and support around the world uh, on a bottle where the, uh, the funds are going. So now you can really see that very clearly on our bottles. And every year we can continue to date the different community project numbers that you see on the, on the back of the bottle. I love that. It's always nice to have that tangible you know, story or this tangible product that you know that your purchase is helping to fund something. I just think it makes it more real for people. Yeah, and I, th and I think uh, for me, it's about accountability. Often organizations can tell their supporters, uh, I'm doing this in the community, I'm doing that in the community. But I think that there's a, to be accountable is really to publish what you're doing so that it could be verified. It's not good enough to just say, I'm doing this. And so that's what we, we intended to do. And, and we're hoping that other organizations will be willing to do that. Because once organizations are publishing on an ongoing basis, what truly are they doing in the community? It just, it will help all of us around the world. Yeah. And so what's next for Alafia? <laughs> everything is next, you know, everything, everything is next. We, uh, as you know, Alafia is not just trying to support communities and provide income in in togo and west africa we're here too in the u.s we're creating jobs here in the u.s and our intention is to expand and creating americans and more and more american jobs as well as we expand uh, in togo but i think when we think about what is really next for alafia what is next for alafia is to continue what we have always done and do it bigger uh, there are so many communities around the world that are suffering and that suffering needs to, needs to end. Uh, so to answer a question, our intention is to continue uh, our various community projects we do and do them bigger. But when it comes to product, uh, we have a, a bit of a innovations uh, in pipeline. Next year, we will be expanding black soap line into hair product. You can use it for shampoo and conditioner, but we can have a full, a full set uh, on our black soap line, really excited about it. We're also working on expanding our baby uh, set and, and, and segment. And uh, there are some uh, new ingredients that we're, we're working on uh, for, toward the end of uh, next year. And, you know, but I think at the end of the day for us is, uh, uh, is listen to our customers and be able to adjust and pivot and to serve the need of what our customers want and need.
Well, that's all really, really exciting. I really appreciate you taking the time today to share your story and a little bit more about your company. So one last question, if you can leave our audience with just one piece of advice on how they can live a happier and healthier life, what would that be? Well, I'll tell you how I do it. Uh, I think uh, first it's important that our families understand that life is uh, usually very intense, right? We deal, we have families, work, it goes on and on and it could be overwhelming. And the way I go about first to find happiness in, in life is to recognize my wish to serve others. And so that, that brings me joy. And a, a healthier part really is just uh, as simple as uh, trying to eat healthy when you can. Uh, I think that's really important. Uh, you do have a, a healthy diet and it's a, that's and everybody what is healthy for everybody is different um, but i think we um eating healthy is very important and for our soul knowing that somehow we're serving orders and it's quite those two things that brings a it makes life more joyful and and on, on the tough days to just know that okay today is a tough day because tough days are part of life and that tomorrow will be better and that kind of mindset ultimately helps me. Well, thank you so much. You are an incredible inspiration. And if anyone wants to check out Alafia, you can go to alafia.com. And you can, of course, look for the products at Whole Foods, Target, Walmart, and I'm sure many other retailers as well. 